the game of the seeds. Why am I uh, choosing to explain a game when I am trying to design uh, an educational model or system for all schools to not to stuff information but to contribute to building personalities in the students. Why am I introducing a game? Because a game is always easy to explain and the purpose of a game is to have fun. So we simplify the aim of the education into a game just to focus on the joy of learning. How does a game work? Here the big difficulty, this is Albert Einstein's reflection, no? how to teach, how, how can we make our teaching so potent in the emotional life of men so that the influence of our education withstand, holds the pressure of the elemental psychic forces in the individual. I, I really appreciate that Einstein had this big question in mind that is related to education. If you are an international teacher, Uh, you have heard a lot about assessment for learning and you might have realized, like I do realize now, that what we are doing is we're learning for assessment. We are transforming the means into the aim. Assessment is a means for education, but not the aim of education. So how can we revert that? How can we use, uh, how can we gain evidence of the students learning in order to assess This game aims to find evidence on the approaches to learning in order to assess the student just by playing a game. So what are the ideas and what are the background? There is a lot of research behind this game. I'm not going to go into the details, but of course, mindfulness in education is essential. It's at the core of this game. Concept-based teaching and learning, when we are designing the content and the conceptual matrices for each level in the game, this is important to consider. Of course, the student in the center of education and his questions are the ones that matter. So students should have the freedom to choose what to do, what, what activities, what challenges to, cha to take. And we assess from their own freedom to choose. And of course, we're not leaving behind this aim of, of uh, getting through the IGCSE and IB international evaluations. And especially in mathematics, the National Olympiads problem solving. And finally, the idea or the concept in education that is now known as gamification. We finally realized that kids like to play, they like to game and they get addicted to games. So how can we use that tendency of the students uh, in gaming to make them play and learn science, maths, and other things? So what is the model of the game? How do, what are the rules of the game? How do we play the game? Basically, you need to remind yourself that the, uh, the purpose is to have fun. Learning is a consequence of that, but we want to have fun. We want the students to enjoy this. There are six different levels. These levels are not necessarily related to any age or year group. The levels, they always start from the first level, regardless of their age. They start from scratch from here and they move forward through this spiral. In, in, in this process of spiraling through different concepts, and different challenges, they are <clears throat> learning and uh, moving up in different levels uh, through the game. There are four different colors of seeds or four different types of challenges, white, red, blue, and green. Uh, and I will explain what they mean, right? But that is basically the student is choosing challenges of different colors at different levels and by taking these challenges they accumulate seeds. What are the seeds? What kinds of seeds do we have? Like we said there are four colors. The red seeds are for 
individual challenges, self-management skills, academic challenges. Most of the time we do this in class, we give them multiple choice questions, individual tests. Those challenges are for this kind of seeds. And then also communication skills, ability to communicate with the body, with the language, through drawings, through oral and written text, bilingual communication, collaboration skills, and finally, the big ones, the wellness challenges, the challenges that the student has to take in order to get white seeds directly. So basically, this is the big picture of the game. Teacher, the Magister Ludi, is the one that runs the game. He is the referee. He is the one that decides um, how much seeds each student gets for each challenge that he completes. Um, he runs the game, he's responsible for the game. And then there should be in the game other teachers, or this could be also students that have enough knowledge to transfer it to other students, where, where the different areas are related to the wellness challenges, the mathematical challenges, artistic nature, language, and technology. These are the areas where the students learn. Of course, the students learn in the classrooms, but the game happens in another place. It's a physical place, could be a room, could be an open field, could be uh, a basketball court, anywhere else where the, student, where the students go. This could be offered as an activity, as a club, as an inter-house for a school at all ages. So it's core curriculum. It's not the curriculum of the school, it's core curriculum activities. Again, this is a bit of detail on what kind of challenges each color represents. And the white seeds are the ones that matter most. They are achieved when you take out some wellness challenge for each uh, level or when you connect three beads or three seeds from three different challenges when you have one of each these are primary colors you get a white seed so white seeds are the currency of the game this is what students are um, saving in their account white seeds that come from the approaches to learning or their ability to complete wellness challenges, which are always for each level challenges that have to do with yoga postures, with breathing techniques and meditations. Now there is, a, there is something important here. The meditations are different for each level and they are connected to the concepts that we want the students to learn. So the meditation is also a tool for learning, not just for wellness, but for understanding the big picture of science. So this is something that the game brings into the education of the students, the integration of knowledge at a deeper level. Some command terms that we should use to design those challenges, list, measure, estimate, apply, calculate, plot, persevere, organize. We're looking at the student through this lens, red lens, and we are giving him or her these specific challenges from resources that could come from question banks, puzzles, Seneca, also pen and paper whiteboards, and questions from the Olympians. For the green seeds, these are the command terms. We want the students to respond to the contributions of others. So, so we're looking at the student through the green lens. That means his ability or her ability to collaborate with others, support others. And when we award the student with these seeds, we are awarding a recognition for that. Where do we see that? We can see that in labs, exercises, tests, that they work in groups. And also when they team up for, for presenting reports. So inside the classroom, there could be many, many instances in which the students could show their 
green skills, that means ability to collaborate with each other, and the blue, the ability to communicate. How? Well, with precision in language, by drawing and labeling diagrams. We use a lot of that in science to describe, to distinguish, common, to use the body language uh, and the resources, timelines, walk on timelines explaining, for example, the Big Bang Theory, all on unwritten presentations. They can produce videos, podcasts, I don't know, social media is another possibility of exploring the students' communication skills. And finally, we're going into the conceptual um, planification of these games, which is something that we have to explore in detail. But basically, like I said, the game is approached through concept-based teaching and learning, and the content falls into those concepts. So we're focusing on the concepts to fit the content that we want the students to learn. So here we can, we can explore different paths. I'm going to give one example. For example, a level one example of challenges. These are the type of seats and challenges that we'll do in reds, right? So level one in mathematics, Olympiads, mental calculations, game like around the world, multiple choice questions on for that level, right? It could be IGCSE if we could start with class uh, the, the first year of IGC or it could be even before that it could be in key stage three class five multiple choice questions for each topic calculations races in the number line estimation of measurements individual problem solving the body skills ideas that we have discussed already green also collaboration presentations in groups, displays done individually or, or in groups, and reports. There is something here that is important to, to look at, is that at the end of this level, there is a, a matrix that is a conceptual map that encompasses all the content in the level that the students need to complete individually, explain orally, and completing groups. Maybe this they should do first, and then this they should do second, right? But there is a, um, a, a passing condition for the next level. That means they should be able to show an understanding of the concepts that are involved in all these challenges for that level. And of course, the white seeds that the students get by adding these three, or by taking the challenges that are assigned at that level, like for example, I don't know, um, a yoga level one could be uh, some postures that the student has to do and remember, like the sun salutation, things like that. A meditation level one could be just uh, being able to s sit still for 15 minutes while following the guidance of a meditation and learning some, some breathing exercises so we are challenging the students to try these tools to make seeds, to earn seeds, but also to explore the benefits of these ancient techniques. And some examples of what content go falls into this level. So these are examples of activities. For example, we want them to understand the, big back, the, the idea of the Big Bang Theory, for example, and to communicate that. Or we want them to understand the atom, the molecules, uh, cell, tissues, organs, concept of mass, volume, density. These are the topics that we want to uh, cover in this level for science, force, pressure, movement. And these are the contents related to maths that relate to science. So this is the coordination between maths and science for each level. We understand that to to take these challenges in science, you have to have these tools. We have to have this understanding of the number systems, for instance, and the four operations, and the, num and, and the different sets of numbers, and, and simple geometry calculations for area volume. 
So once you understand the concept of volume, you can understand the concept of density and so on. So this is the interconnection between science and maths, and this is the communication that means language. This is an example for one level. Of course, this is a draft, and we have, we are working on um, content and concepts for each level. In this case, we are starting from class five. So we are starting with what is known as key stage three, and we're moving towards the IB. So it's a long-term game that ends with a level of understanding of higher level of science, physics, and languages. So back to the big picture, this is a soar. This is a picture by Vincent van Gogh. The soar is the Magister Ludi spreading seeds and seeds grow in different fields at different times. The, um, like I said at the beginning, the levels have nothing to do with ages. They have to do with the um, ability of the student to pass those challenges. Um, there is no f failure for this. It's just trial and error. Like you learn by attempting these challenges several times until you get them right. That's the way the students learn in, in, a, in a video game, right? So we're using those um, skills that the students are, are using in, in gaming. The purpose of the game is to achieve as many seats as they can so that they can go from one level to the next level. And when the student reaches the last level, the level six, and has enough seats, he will be the Magistral Ludi. That means completing the game means that you become the sower. That would be the ideal situation. Students that become teachers in this game that could support the learning of other students. And the space, the fire, the earth, the air and the water, the elements of nature written in Spanish, English and Sanskrit are there because the matrices, that means the conceptual maps that we will be offering to each level are connected with these elements. So far, so good. <laughs>